In this video, we will cover some basics about chemical reactions. This includes talking about thermodynamics and reaction kinetics. Before we talk about reactions, it helps to remember how potential energy can be stored in the chemical bonds of molecules. The reactions we will talk about either make or break these bonds. You should also recall for this discussion the concept of entropy or disorder. That spontaneous transformations go from high potential energy with much order to low potential energy and more kinetic energy or even heat, random kinetic energy and motion of molecules. This is a bit like going down a slide. It doesn't take effort to go from the top to the bottom. It doesn't take an additional input of energy. On the other hand, the other direction, going from disordered atoms and small molecules into longer molecules with definite structures and orders, this takes an input of energy. Again, this is like spending energy to climb to the top of the hill or the top of a slide. In biochemistry, reactions that release potential energy and increase entropy are known as exergonic reactions. If they release this energy as heat, which is the kinetic energy of random molecular motion, they're also known as exothermic reactions. In contrast, reactions that require an input of energy are known as endergonic. If they require heat energy, they're known as endothermic. Let's for a moment go back to the example of a ball on the top of a hill or a person on the top of a slide. In those quote-unquote reactions, we go from high potential energy to low potential energy. So we release energy and the reaction happens spontaneously. Think about this for a second though. If we have a ball on the top of a hill, does it just roll down by itself? Or if you are standing still on the top of a slide, you don't normally all of a sudden start sliding down. Does that mean that our analogy is not appropriate? Or is there something missing? Even for a spontaneous reaction, such as going down a slide, they often require an input of some small initial energy to get going. For example, pushing yourself off, or simply a slight push to the ball on the top of a hill to allow it to roll. This required energy, the activation energy, is sort of like a speed bump or a barrier in the thermodynamics of the reaction. You need a certain amount of energy to get going and get over the hump, even though you end up releasing more energy when you are finished. When the bonds between molecules and atoms are changed, either new bonds are made or old ones are broken, and a chemical reaction has taken place. You can split larger molecules into smaller ones or go in the opposite direction. Finally, reactions can be described using molecular formulas. The total number of atoms in a molecule are written in subscript, while the proportion of those types of molecules are written as larger numbers. One example reaction, in some sense not altogether too different from what occurs in our own body, is the decomposition of sugar molecules, such as the ones found in sucrose, into pure carbon and water. This is an example of an exothermic reaction because it produces a lot of heat energy. And this makes sense. The sugar molecule represents a lot of atoms bonded together. All of those bonds represent potential chemical energy. When they are broken, some of that energy is released as heat. We can categorize different reactions based on what is occurring. Catabolic reactions, also known as decomposition reactions, are when larger molecules are split into smaller ones. The reverse, known as anabolic or synthesis reactions, take two smaller molecules and combine them to make one large molecule. Sometimes 
A reaction will result in atoms from one molecule being transferred to another or swapped with another part. These are known as exchange reactions. Finally, oxidation reduction reactions, sometimes collectively known as redox reactions, are a special case when one molecule gives an electron to another. This is usually thought of as an example of decomposition and exchange in the same case. Let's look at each of these a little more closely. Synthesis reactions are when smaller molecules come together and form bonds between each other to make a larger molecule. Here, a bunch of amino acid molecules link up in a series of synthesis reactions to form a protein, which is simply a chain of amino acids, or an amino acid polymer. The reverse is known as a decomposition reaction. If we take a large molecule, such as starch or glycogen, which is made up of many sugar molecules bonded together, we can split apart the individual sugars through a decomposition reaction. Following the general principles we laid out at the beginning of this video, we can guess that the anabolic synthesis reactions are endergonic and require an input of energy. This is because we are going from a disordered state to a more ordered state with new chemical bonds that hold potential energy. In the catabolic or decomposition reaction, the energy in the chemical bonds is being released. Therefore, this reaction is likely spontaneous and exergonic. Exchange reactions are used to transfer atoms or entire parts of a molecule from one molecule to another. One way you can think of this is that while one molecule is being decomposed, another molecule is being synthesized in the same reaction. In this case, a high-energy high phosphate bond is removed from the ATP molecule and it is transferred to the glucose molecule. The chemical bond in ATP had slightly more energy than the new one in glucose, so this reaction is probably at least slightly exergonic. Oxidation reduction reactions always come in a pair, and together they are known as redox reactions. Here we are reacting two molecules, let's call them A and B. Both are neutral to begin with. Both have a neutral charge, or no net electric charge. In the redox reaction, A is going to transfer an electron to B. This will change the charge on each molecule. A will become a positive ion, or cation, and B will become a negative ion, or an anion. The molecule that is losing the electron, in this case A, is said to have been oxidized. The molecule that has gained the electron was reduced. Don't become confused thinking that reduction means you have lost something. In fact, reduction refers to the gain of an electron. All chemical reactions can be reversed in theory. For example, amino acids formed a protein molecule through a synthesis reaction. But this same protein can be broken down into amino acid, individual amino acids through decomposition. Many reactions in biology, although reversible in theory, are irreversible in practice for several reasons. One reason is that it would take an input of energy to reverse an extragonic reaction. Secondly, the products of a reaction must be present in order to combine or either synthesize or decompose and return to the reacted state. If the products are dissipated or used up in other reactions, the first reaction cannot be reversed. So far in this video, we have only talked about the thermodynamics of a reaction, or whether or not they will occur spontaneously and if they release energy or store the energy put in. Even reactions that release energy require a little bit of energy to get going, and this means that they might happen very slowly. 
If we raise the temperature at which a reaction is occurring and increase the kinetic energy and the molecular motion that these molecules are experiencing, we can perhaps have enough energy to get over the activation barrier. Increasing the concentration of substrates can also help. For some reaction, there are other additional ways to speed them up. This includes using a catalyst or an enzyme, which are special molecules our body uses to assist and speed up reactions. Make note, however, that actions taken to speed up a reaction, for example, raising the temperature or using a catalyst, are simply attempts to overcome the activation barrier and they do not impact the thermodynamics of the reaction, only the kinetics. In other words, the amount of energy released by a reaction, or the amount of energy that is stored by a reaction or that needs to be put in, is independent of how fast the reaction occurs.